Pacific moisture has surged into much of the country, and when that happens in the depths of winter, we see widespread cloud material. And even in the southwestern deserts, this is fairly rare. I don't recall ever seeing anything like this when I worked out there in Nevada. But we see this layer of low stratus all the way from Las Vegas up through Desert Rock, Beatty, and up to Tonopah. Even Area 51 located right about there, they're underneath a marginal VFR overcast. And that extends all the way up to Cedar City, St. George, and back across Lake Mead. And that gives you some indication of the sheer amount of moisture which has poured into the deserts. The moisture has not had a chance to mix through the depths of the atmosphere, so it's behaving very much like some of the air masses we see in the central U.S. This, of course, will be kind of a temporary phenomenon. So let's take a look at that chart and see what's going on. A weak push of cold air into the central U.S., already coming back to southeasterly flow in Kansas and Oklahoma. South of that, a transitional air mass. The dew points still up in the 50s, and here I've been running the dehumidifier all day. We're located right in there. And the true tropical air located out there in the Gulf, where we have a couple of squall lines south of Louisiana. In the western U.S., here's the latest Pacific system, and I don't think I carried that preset back far enough, but inland it covers much of northern California, and very little snow being reported because the freezing levels are still up pretty high. Truckee, California, still in the upper 30s. And we've got fog in the inland valleys. Same thing up in the Columbia River area. And going up the coast, another Pacific system affecting British Columbia. And plenty of cold air across Alaska. Not much in the way of organized weather systems affecting that area. Colder Arctic air locked up in Greenland and the northern Canadian high Arctic. And just this one little Hudson Bay weather system. Even up there, temperatures are still fairly mild. Looks like 21 degrees out there in the Belcher Islands. And then we drop south and we've got rain all through Quebec. So this is definitely on the warm side. And you get down to Boston, 62 degrees. We've got 63 this afternoon in Pittsburgh. And 50s and 60s all through the Appalachians. And now we switch over to AWIPS. This, of course, is the computer system used by the Weather Service. So you're seeing the kind of charts they're seeing in your local Weather Service forecast office. And I do appreciate your comments back on Wednesday, your YouTube comments. Those are definitely helpful. And I will continue to look through those over the days ahead. So please let me know what you think of these charts and, more importantly, which ones you would like to see. I'll try to work those in where I can. Okay, let's get into this upper level chart. This is the 300 millibar analysis up at about 30,000 feet. This is going to be the wintertime jet stream level. And we see that the Pacific is wide open. A very zonal flow, high zonal index. And this would be a positive EPO pattern because that gate between Hawaii and Alaska is wide open. Lots of mass flowing between those two areas. And that, of course, brings not only Pacific storms inland, but also the moisture at all tropospheric levels. And there's one chunk of that moisture heading into California tonight that will cross the Rockies and affect the Central Plains. And then we've got another trough digging in for later in the weekend, around Sunday, into the California area. The ridge right here builds into Alaska. So this becomes more meridional, in other words, a lower zonal index. And when that happens, we tend to see cold air moving south and warm air moving north. And that's kind of against the natural state of things, and that leads to bad weather. So let's jump right into the precipitable water here. This lets us actually look at the moisture. We've got the shading indicating the precipitable water. We've got the red lines indicating 1,000 through 700 millibar thickness. In other words, they're just basically isotherms for the lowest three kilometers. And also we've got the pressure in black. 
which is not really shown very much except low pressure up there off of Vancouver Island, another low pressure area right there in Oregon, and just troughiness all the way down into, into the Pacific. So this is going to be what things look like along the West Coast around the time that you're watching this. This is 0Z. Zero Z. You can follow along down here in the lower right. That's the valid time and the forecast hour located right there. So drawing the fronts, well, the fronts do show up pretty well. See that packing of the red lines? That's a thermal gradient. And south of the thermal gradient, that's where we find the fronts. So one right here, very easy to find. That's going to be the cold front. Becomes a warm front right there, becomes sort of a stationary front, and then tapers back into the next system out there around Fort Bragg, Arcata, and then we pick up our warm front like that. So this is sort of the tropical sector offshore. This is kind of a warm conveyor belt right there along the California coast, and a similar setup with the next wave further upstream. Now if we run this forward, don't really see any closed lows, just kind of a trophy appearance. Now it looks like there is a wave trying to come together right there. Yeah, in fact, there's the low. So that frontal system definitely taking root tomorrow morning and coming on shore around San Francisco. So the weather out there is going to be going downhill. By midday, the low pretty much right over the Bay Area and a good slug of that energy heading right for Southern California tomorrow evening. And then that'll move inland. We see the precipitable water starting to fall off, which is pretty normal. Moisture in the southwestern deserts don't really get along. So, yeah, we see those precipitable water values start going down. But there's that closed low, the cold front making its way into Arizona. The warm front, uh, I'm not sure. There could be one there. I think that might be the actual warm front. So we're going to go with that and an inclusion. And then, of course, that'll be crossing the Rockies on Sunday and then heading into Texas. And you can see some of that green starting to pop up on the lee side. A break for the West Coast Sunday night into Monday, but more trouble coming in. So our frontal system is going to be looking like that. Warm front, and then I guess this is going to be the occlusion right up off the Oregon coast. And that'll head into the California area for Tuesday and Wednesday, another wave for Wednesday and a big one coming up for Thursday. And that's probably going to be associated with a strong atmospheric river. Look at that 960 millibar low. In fact, that's below 960 off the coast. And of course, that's going to ramp up the gradients and get those winds going late Wednesday into Thursday. All right, so that'll be a good place to stop as far as that goes. But you can see that there's more coming so hopefully California will get caught up on its rainfall. And of course, when we talk about California and rainfall, we look at the integrated vapor transport that gives us a idea of how strong these atmospheric rivers are. This is the one we're looking at right now, heading into California, and that's bringing in values of about 800, which is fairly significant. So heavy rains expected for Northern California tonight into tomorrow. Another little wave coming on shore. And then there's our break for Sunday evening. The next one coming in for Monday. And then we go all the way up to Wednesday and Thursday. And that's going to be the big one. And you can see those values along the coast up to about 800 to 1,000 across a very wide area. Looks like the main cyclone itself will remain offshore. That kind of gets carried northward. So that may tend to limit the winds that are coming inland, but more coming in from the pipeline from Asia. So for the complete forecast sequence, we'll switch over to pivotal weather. There's our current Pacific system moving inland. And we go forward into tonight and into Saturday. Not much weather going on across the country, except out there in the Rockies and Great Basin. Looks like that system we have along the Gulf Coast will break up a little bit. 
just a little bit of cold air coming back in behind it, but on the other side of this ridge, we've already got that southerly flow starting to develop. So this is an area of warm air advection. And down there in Texas, looks like even some downslope flow setting in. So that may bring up the temperatures a little bit. And along the Rockies, lee side troughing. So a lot of factors here pointing out mild weather. And as we go into Saturday and Sunday, there's our system coming through Southern California, moving into Arizona, drying out a little bit, but producing some weather along the Continental Divide for late Sunday. Then it emerges out there in Texas for Monday, and we see the warm advection really get going as the low-level jet develops, we get those pressure falls out there in the high plains that creates an acceleration in the low levels from south to north. And with that, showers and storms start developing. And those will move eastward Monday night into the lower Mississippi River Valley. There could be some severe weather from Illinois down to Arkansas. And that continues moving to the east. Here we get some decent cold air advection in the wake of the system. Some snow wrapping around into Omaha and Sioux Falls. That snow fairly limited in geographic extent, and you can see that there's not much cold air coming in behind this system initially, the 540 line about like that, but we're going to see some anticyclogenesis across Manitoba and Saskatchewan, and gradually by Wednesday and Thursday, we see those pressures start to come up a little bit. That'll drive even more cold air southward. Out there in the Pacific, things going downhill for that big one. There it is. Increasing pressure gradients, rain, snow in the Sierra Nevadas, and that'll be something we're going to be watching about four or five days from now. And then across the rest of the U.S., Big Old Ridge, 1035, 1037 millibar high, driving north flow all the way to the Gulf. That'll create this offshore component and dry things out. And you can see the return flow really having trouble getting set back up. Just a a day or two before that, yeah, it was setting up right there. This is Wednesday. That's the lee side trough, but that pretty much went away for Thursday and Friday. Then going into next Friday, about a week from now, not much change. Little Pacific system crossing the central Rockies and emerging on the other side. But it looks like kind of a dry system there. So... That's not going to do a whole lot, maybe produce a little bit of warm air advection snow in the northern plains, and then that'll be out of the picture. And looks like maybe a dry period for the 9th and 10th, and that's probably a good place to stop. And just checking back in on that Stratus in Nevada, that's not to say that doesn't happen. In fact, when we get those deep Pacific systems coming inland, producing precip, yeah, the ceilings and visibility do go down. But you can see that the weather here is fair. There's not much mid or high cloud, and that's what makes this rare as far as I'm concerned. And that goes all the way down to Prescott, Flagstaff, and then back over towards Tonopah. And you can see in the San Joaquin Valley, they've got some trapped moisture there producing fog and haze down below, and we've got all this Pacific energy working over the top of that. And down there in the Los Angeles area, a lot of that stratus has moved well inland, right up to the San Gabriel Mountains and down through the coastal range. And a frontal cloud mass covering much of DFW, Central Texas, and Austin at the Sour. You can see a little bit of a dry slot working into southeastern Texas. There's that MCS out there in the Gulf. Most of this is offshore. But it looks like a few rumbles going through the Pensacola to Panama City area out there in western Florida. Out there in Tennessee, Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri, getting mostly anvil material from that MCS down at the south. But down in the lower levels, there is a front running from north to south, producing some showers. And most of that is below this cirrus overcast. There's a look at Colorado and Nebraska. We can see snow on the ground. That's it right there. 
plenty of snow from Denver to Colorado Springs, up to Goodland, and up to Sioux City. There's the Great Lakes getting another form of that Pacific energy as a front moves eastward. On the backside, not much clearing. In fact, layers of stratus and stratocumulus through Wisconsin, producing a little bit of snow. And then further south around Chicago, Rockford, to the Quad Cities, clearing. And there's the northeastern U.S., very little visible imagery, so we're going to stop it right there. There's some of that warm air advection overcast in northern New York, warm conditions down to the south, and we can switch over to the infrared and see what that looks like. And that shows us that most of the clouds are in the lower and mid-levels. And there's our look at the Pacific, the more vertically developed clouds in a band running all the way from the Pacific up towards southern Oregon. And another way we can look at this is with the water vapor imagery. And this is not positioned very well. It mostly shows the subtropical high down to the south. But there's that wave up there in Oregon associated with this stuff inland. And then the next wave further out offshore. And there we go. We can see that next system right there. You can see the telltale S shape on the back side. That's indicating that baroclinic energy right there and an even bigger system out to the west. And that's probably a good place to stop for today. Again, I appreciate your comments about the new charts that we're using. Please continue to comment. And again, if there's stuff you'd really like to see, and it's not too localized, not too focused on your area, let me know and we'll try to put that up over the weeks ahead. Anyway, that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining and we'll see you back here on Monday for the Patreon supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great New Year's Eve and a great new year. Take care. Bye-bye.